How's it going you guys? So for this video, I'm going to go over the problem number of distinct islands. This problem is very similar to number of islands. I would say this is a bit more difficult. So if you haven't gone over number of islands, feel free to check out my other video where I explain that problem and the link will be in the description. So without further ado, the problem description says given a non empty 2D array grid of zeros and ones, an island is a group of ones representing land connected four directionally, horizontal, or vertical. You may assume all four edges of the grid are surrounded by water. Count the number of distinct islands. An island is considered to be the same as another if and only if one island can be translated and not rotated or reflected to equal the other. So as you can see in the first example, we have two islands here but we should only return one because the shape of these islands are the same, right? Because we have two rows and two columns that make up an island and each island has that same shape. So we should only return one. So this problem is going to involve DFS just like how we did for the number of islands video but we are gonna have extra parameters inside of our recursive function. So let's jump over to the whiteboard and I'll show you guys how to solve this. So in order to have distinct islands, they need to have different shapes, right? So if we had, say, an island that looked like this, and then another island that looked like this, these are technically not equal, right? because this one on the bottom, one is on the right side and one is on the left side. And then if we had maybe one, 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 one. So these would actually be considered equal, right? Because the shape of the island is the same. We have two number ones on the top, one number one on the bottom on the left side. So we need a way to represent an island. And the way I think that we should represent the island is based on the direction of our recursive calls. So I'm going to go into a full example and I'll show you guys what I mean by that. So since we need to calculate the distinct islands, anytime you hear the word unique or distinct, we're probably going to be utilizing a set. And inside this set, we're going to store strings. And what these strings are going to represent are the recursive path that we have gone in order to build up that island. And this is how we actually compare the inherent shape of our islands. So I'll show you what this looks like. Just like how we uh, did in the number of islands video, we're going to iterate over our matrix. Whenever we encounter a one, which is island, we need to change all of the neighbors horizontally or vertically that are ones to zeros to water, because that means we're done looking at them. But as we are going down our recursive path, we need to represent each recursive call as a specific character. So we have a couple different characters that we need to map to our string. So we can say X is going to be the very start of our recursive uh, recursion depth, right? And then we can say if we are checking out of bounds or if we found a zero, then that can just be equal to O. And these, these characters can be anything that you want. So this would be equal to out of bounds or we found a zero, which is just water, right? And then if we're going in the upwards direction, if we're checking our above neighbor, then we can say u is the character. So u equals up. And then just like for right, left, down, we can say r is equal to right, left, or l is equal to left, and then d is equal to down. So we have the characters X, O, U, R, L, and D. And all of these characters uh, we're going to use in order to build our string. So if we were to first look 
at character one right here, or this is an integer one, uh, we need to build our string. So x equals our start, so we're going to have x. We can create right here, x. And whenever we encounter a one, we change it to water so that we don't look at it again. And then we're going to check all of our directions. So we're going to check above us. So what that means, above, up means you. And since above us is out of bounds, that's represent, represented as an O. So we would say O. Then we're going to check to the right of us. Right means R. So we have R here. And we found a 1. So what that means is we change this to water. And we do the same thing. We're going to check above us. So that means U. And that's out of bounds. So that means O for out of bounds. We're going to check to the right of us. Right means R. And we found water. So uh, water means O. Now we need to check below us. So we're going to say D is down. And we found a 1 again. So we need to change that to water. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to check above us from this position now. And we found, so we're going to say up. And we found a 0. So that means O. We're going to check to the right of us. So R would be an O. We're going to check below us. Down is an O. And then we're going to check to the left of us. So L. But then we found another one. So we're going to change that to water. So this changes to water. And we're going to check above us. So up, we found water above us. So that's O. And then we're going to check to the right of us. So R, that's O. And then we're going to check below us. And we'll, conti we'll continue the string down here. So it'll go like this. And then down is going to be O. And then finally, we check left. And left is out of bounds, so we get LO. And then we go back up here. We still haven't gone left for this value, so we're going to check left here. So we're going to get L, and that's water as well. So we're going to go O. And then right here, we need to still check down. Down is water, so down O. And then finally, we're going to go left. We're going to say left O. So this massive string is going to be how we represent the island 1111, where it's in the following structure. So we have 1111. So that's equivalent to this massive string. And we're going to add this string inside of this set. And that way, when we eventually get to this island right here, it will be represented structurally the same. So we will only record that island a single time. And so after we have calculated this massive string and added it to our set, we're going to iterate over our matrix. We'll eventually get to this island. We'll encounter uh, another number one. And we're going to compute the same thing. We're going to do the same thing that we did for this one and then add it to the set. So this one will change to water, right? And we'll add it to the set here. And since this one is equal to this one, right? Because one and one, they're sa the same structurally. So we would only record that a single time in our set. So we should only find two 
distinct islands in this matrix. So this is like the main idea of the algorithm. So I know it may seem a little confusing, but it's actually not much different from the number of islands solution. There's very subtle differences. So next, I'm going to jump into the code and I'll show you guys how to implement it. So let's first handle the case where our grid is null or empty. So let's say if our grid is null or its length is zero, just return zero. And we're going to need to have a set where it's storing strings. And this will hold all of our unique islands. And let's also extract the lengths of our grid. So we can say m is equal to grid length and n is equal to grid at index 0 dot length. And we're going to iterate over these uh, rows and columns. And once we do that, we need to check if the current position is land, right? So if grid at ij is equal to a 1, which is land, then what that means is we need to compute that string and add it to our set. So we can say string, and we can call it our path. We can, we can have another helper function. We can call it compute path. And inside this compute path helper function, we're going to pass in our grid. Uh, our current position, i and j, and then we can pass in our lengths just for convenience. But keep in mind, we had a couple different characters that we use to represent our string. So I'm going to write them out uh, up here. So we have x, that will be our start. O will be out of bounds or water. And then u is up. D is down, right, R is right, and then L is left, right? Those are all the characters that we're working with. So we need to pass in the start character. So that's X. So we're going to have another parameter in here that's going to tell us the direction. And in this case, our direction is just the start. So we're going to have the character X. And after we write this helper function, we're going to add that path inside of our set. And we're only returning the number of distinct islands. So all we need to do to return this number is just get the set.size. Because by the end of iteration of our 2D array, we should have a unique, only unique strings in our set. So we can say return set.size. So now all that's left is we need to write this compute path function, and we're going to be returning a string. So let's do that. We can say private string compute path. We're going to have our grid, our current positions. We're going to have our lengths. And then we're going to have some sort of string, and we can just call this our, our direction. So we need to handle the base case where we're out of bounds or we are encountering water. And if we do that, then we need to return the character uh, O. So we can say if i is less than 0 or j is less than 0 or i is greater than or equal to the number of rows that we have or j is greater than or equal to the number of columns that we have, or grid at position ij is equal to 0, which is water, then what that means is we need to return the character O. So that's how we represent all of those cases. And then if we get past this point, we know we are looking at land. So we need to immediately change that piece of land to water. So we can say grid at ij is equal to 0 for water. And now we need to compute our path in every single direction. So let's do that. We can say string left. We're going to compute the path. And we're going to pass in our grid. We're going to pass in i. And since we are going left, 
that would mean that we are decreasing the number the column so we would say j minus one we're going to pass in m and n and then our string direction since we're going left if we look up here to this mapping l equals left so we're going to pass in the string l here and we're going to do the same things for all of the other directions so we can just copy this so let's copy it three more times so we're going to go right and when we go right we increase j and then our direction is going to be the character r we're going to go up and to go up we need to do i minus one because this is decreasing our row and up is equivalent to the character u and then we're going to go down and we're going to say i plus one and that's equivalent to d and so after we've computed all of those paths in every single direction from this recursive function we're going to return our direction that has just come in so whatever's in this parameter we can say direction plus left plus right plus up plus down and so this is going to build that massive string that we did in the first example so let's just make sure that this code works and there we go so next i'm going to go over the time and space complexity the time complexity is going to be big o of m times n where m is the number of rows we have and n is the number of columns so we have to touch every element in our grid a single time. So that's why it's m times n. And then our space complexity is also big O of m times n, but this comes from our recursion depth. Because if you imagine in the worst case, say we had a grid that contained only ones, what that would mean is we would check every single element in our grid in our recursion stack, right? So that would make the recursion depth go to m times n. So hopefully that was a useful video for you guys. I know it was pretty complicated. Uh, it's definitely not a normal type of solution you come across, but I really like this problem just because it's similar to number of islands and uh, a lot of companies like asking, you know, twists to that very popular problem. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.